Hey guys, welcome back to How to Build a Blog with Laravel. I'm your host, J.A. Curtis, and um, let's go ahead and keep moving along with this application. Um, we're building our blog. We've learned how to create new posts, which is great. Um, we've got those stored in the database now. And um, before we move on to actually pulling them out of the database, I wanna kinda go back and review something we talked in the last video in part 12. Um, we also had part 12 and a half, so if any of you missed 12 and a half, 12 and a half is an optional video. What we did was set up JavaScript form validation. It's not required for moving forward, but it's just kind of a nice thing that maybe you wanna learn. Um, we set up the partially JavaScript, it's called partially, it's a JavaScript form validation library. We set that up and um, learned how to use it, and so now our forms have JavaScript validation in addition to what we did in part 12, which is the server-side validation. Okay, when we were in part 12, we talked about how the, the validation library in Laravel is really, really easy, and if any of our validation on the server side fails, it'll automatically go back to the previous page and show all of the errors. Well, I didn't really show how to actually display the errors, I just kind of told you that it would. So in this video, I want to um, talk to you about sessions and flash, mes flash messages as well as kind of managing those errors, okay? Because what we did is we didn't actually set them up to display in our views, even though Laravel's kind of doing some of the backend stuff for us, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to get forward, first thing we need to know before we move forward is about sessions. Now a session is a um, period of time when you're on a website, okay? So um, by default, I know um, in Laravel it's 120 minutes, which is two hours, and basically the way Laravel considers a session is any time that you are um, in the browser with and you make a request within two hours of a previous one, it's considered the same session. Um, if you make a longer period than if there's a longer you know period between session uh, requests than two hours, then it's considered a new session. So sessions are really good because we can actually store things, um, store data for our users in the sessions without needing to. Um, if it's like uncritic, not critical information or things like that, we can just pass it along in the sessions. It gets deleted really easily. Um, it's not you know permanently in our database or anything like that. So sessions can be a good way for kind of information that's just very temporary in nature to be stored. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing with sessions. In fact, is um, storing very temporary information, things like messages, because messages only need to be displayed very quickly, and then they're gone, and we can just delete them. And putting them in a database can sometimes be overkill. Okay, um, not to say you can't do that. You can actually store sessions in databases if you need to, but it's kind of overkill for the what we're doing in this uh, blog. So let's go ahead and um, show you where you configure sessions before we you know get too deep into this. In case you need to make changes to some of the settings um, on your sessions. First thing we do is in your we're in the blog application, so just we're opening up the project we've been working on. And if you go under config, there's a session.php file down here. Now this is where you manage your session. You don't manage the sessions, but you can edit the settings for them. So you can also see here that there's different ways to save sessions. We can save them in the database, we can save them as cookies or as files. The default is files, we're just gonna go ahead and do that for now, but you could obviously change them to cookies and databases if you need to. Um, I honestly think cookies are a pretty good way to do it, but a lot of people like to save them to databases. Um, the file is kind of like a combination of the two. It actually saves a physical file in our storage um, and then framework, I think, sessions. And it'll actually store the sessions as a file in our, like, on the server. Um, so it's almost like having a database, almost like a Redis kind of database, but not um, like a NoSQL database, almost. Anyway, that's basically what it is. And it's basically just an array that file that's in there. So that's kind of what we're going to do by default. But again, you can work with cookies or anything else if you want, would rather do that. You just change them, and you can see your options are right here. Um, the other thing that we have here is the lifetime value of the session. So by default, it's two hours. I think two hours is a very long session, personally, unless you were running something like uh, a social network. But for a blog, I would honestly probably change this to 30 minutes. For our purposes, it's absolutely irrelevant. But if you're working on um, 
you know, a more, if you're actually working on an application for uh, real life, you might want to change that. 30 minutes is like a good session for me. I feel like if someone hasn't made a page request in 30 minutes, they're probably, it's probably basically a new session because they probably left and came back. So I like 30 minutes as a session, but we'll just keep it at the default of a, of two hours. So this is in minutes. So this is 120 minutes is two hours. You can also expire on close. I like to set this to true because to me, if you close the browser or you close the window or whatever that your website's in, the next time you open it should be considered a new session, even if it was less than 30 minutes ago. So I like to set true to this, but this is mostly, some of these settings that I'm doing is because I'm so used to working with cookie sessions. With file sessions, they're kind of um, designed to be like a little longer lasting, so you're not deleting and you know removing files all the time. Um, you can also encrypt cookies if you want. This just uses your, um, you have an encryption ID that's automatically generated when you did Laravel new project. So you can um, you can definitely uh, um, encrypt these if you want, um, but I honestly don't think it's super needed. It would only really encrypt cookies. I don't even know if you why you would encrypt a file version. I'm seeing if it lets you. But anyway, I'm not too worried about encryption. You really shouldn't have anything super important in your sessions. The only time you might want to encrypt something is if you're saving it in a cookie and so the user would technically have access to change some information and you don't want them to be able to change it like for example changing their user id so that they could log in as someone else if you're if you're relying on that or something that would be bad so in that case you might want to encrypt it so that they can't change it but you really shouldn't be having in, uh, critical information in your sessions okay so that's basically how you would edit a session and remember sessions last in this case two hours is a session and then i want to talk about messages which are stored in the session variable because set messages are very temporary in nature and so are sessions. However, within sessions, there's a special kind of session called a flash session. And a flash session is a session that only exists for the current request or for the next request, I'm sorry. So for the very next request, you can save a flash message and um, in those that only exist for one request. And the next time you do the request, they're automatically removed. And so those are really, really easy to work with um, for messages because we only want them to exist and then be gone. Um, so that's kind of perfect for messages. So that's what we'll be doing for messages. So let's go ahead and open up our um, controller. If we go over to app and PHTTP and then open up our post controller, I want to go ahead and add our first message in here under the store request. Same one we were working with before. And um, basically, I just want to, if we successfully save the file, if, um, you know, if the if we successfully save this in the database, I want to be able to, to pass a successful message to the user. So what we can do to make that happen is we can actually um, use something, a, a class called session. Okay. And with session, you can put use session and flash, and this creates a flash variable or a session that exists for the single request, okay? So it's a variable in our session, it's saved in our session. The flash just means only let it exist for one request and the next request just delete it. Okay, so we're gonna set that. This takes two parameters. The first parameter is a key and the second parameter is a value. So the key is how we reference the session variable. So this is what we're gonna basically call it when we try to, um, when we try to reference it. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set it as success and then for the value, this will actually be the message you want to output. So we'll say um, the blog post was successfully saved. And an exclamation point, just like that. So what we've done here, this is how you can create messages. So you just do session and then flash if you want a temporary one. If you wanted a more permanent, um, something permanently stored in the session, at least for that 120 minutes, you can do, um, not get, you can do um, put. And so with put, it just basically will just add something, but then this would be permanent base, permanent in the session until the session is deleted or flushed. So you can either use get uh, put or flash, and I just like to flash because it's just temporary and it just goes for the one session and then it's gone, which is what we need for um, messages. Okay, so now we have the um, session, well, we don't quite yet, actually, there's something I forgot. Whenever we use these new classes, especially these ones here that turn blue, we need to make sure that we actually have them namespaced in. 
in Laravel 5.2, they're not in here by default, okay? So you need to bring them in. So up at the top, just like we've used all these other things, we've named spaced them in, you can just wanna use use uh, session. And this will allow you to actually access that session variable so that you, or session class, so that you can actually, um, this will actually work for you. If not, it won't work. You're just gonna get an error. Okay, so make sure you do that. Let me just focus, I breezed over that really fast. Um, so we've got our namespacing here. We've been adding other things as we use them. Let's also make sure we bring in session. So just use capital S and then session, and that'll let us uh, allow us to use session. Okay, so that's all it takes. Now we're able to flash items to the session. Well, the problem is now we gotta pull it out of the session and display something to the user, and that involves going over to our view. So let's take a look at our view and set it up in our view. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and if you see what happens here is we're flashing this to the session and then we redirect to post.show, which is this down here, which we haven't set up yet. And so let's go ahead real fast and just set this up very vaguely and um, so that we actually have a view that we can work with. So this has a view when we try to redirect to that page. So we're gonna do return view, and this shouldn't be a surprise to you, posts.show. All right, and again, that's just because um, um, this is the show request and it's in the post controller. Okay, so then if we go over to our views, um, let's go ahead and close all this up and we go to resources, views, and in posts, we're gonna create a new file because we haven't created this one yet. And let's just save it as show.blade.php. All right, and then you should know how to do this. We're gonna go ahead and extend our uh, main file, our main template. We could also, since we're going to go ahead and setting this up, let's go ahead and just set up um, the title as well. So the title will just be equal to a vertical bar and then we'll just do um, view post like that. And then the next section is um, the content, right? And we'll just do end session section and then um, we'll just do a paragraph tag here just to keep it easy. I'll give it a class of lead. It just kind of makes the text looks pretty. Um, and then we'll just say, um, this is the blog post, but it won't actually show the blog post. We'll work on that in the next video. Okay, I just want to have a page that we can go to show the, uh, to show the uh, messages. So what we need to do here is we're extending the main. Now we could obviously set, um, messages up in this view, it would work just fine. The problem is then we would have to do that to every single view, and that's kind of a pain in the ass. What we wanna do is um, set it up in our template file so that we can just, um, we automatically have access to our messages in any any view that inherits our template file. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up main. And if we go open up main.blade.php, you can see here, We've got our, our head and then our navigation and then our content. And what makes the most sense if you think about a message is usually like an alert message that's gonna show at the top of the page. But you don't, usually you want it kinda like below the navigation, but before all the rest of the content. So what we can do here is we've got our navigation here, we open up a container and then we've got our content. So let's go ahead and just put it here at the top of the content. So what we'll do is let's just create a new uh, partial. We'll do include include, and then um, we'll do partials, and then dot, and we'll do on underscore messages, okay? And then now we gotta make a new partial um, for that. So let's come into partials, and we'll do new file. We'll save this as underscore messages. We do the blade.php at the end. All right, let's go ahead and save that. And now we can just put the code needed for our, um, for our messages. So what we obviously wanna do is not every single, this is gonna be on every single page, and not every single page is gonna have a success message, right? Not every single one. So we need to check to see if there is a success message to show, and then we output the HTML if there is. So what we gonna obviously use is an if statement. So I don't think I've showed you guys this before, but we can actually create if statements inside of Blade, okay, without having to actually make an a, a PHP open tag and stuff like that. So if you just use the at sign and you do at sign if, this is almost identical to a PHP one, but it just works inside of Blade. So with the at sign if, we can do our conditional, and then it will. we don't need to do the opening brackets like this. We don't need that. Um, we can just do if, and then you can do your content if that you want to display if the, if the if statement is true, and then we just end it with end if, like that. And now 
it'll check this conditional. It'll output this if um, you know the conditional is true, and then it'll just that's the end of the if statement, and it continues on. Okay, so what we want to do here for conditional is we want to check to see if something is in the session variable. We would do session, and you might think, oh, let's do like maybe is set something like this is set um, session, you know, and check about check the flash message. But there's actually a shortcut we can do to see if something is in it, our flash. We can do session has. And what this will do is you just do has and then the name that you're looking for. So in this case, we called it success. I want to show you again, come back over here. We called this success and that's stored in our session, okay? Um, a lot of people get confused with the flash and seem to think it's like called flash success. And the most common error I see when I teach people is they'll type flash in here. And this will always cause problems because flash is permanently, th there's always an item in your um, session called flash and it's, it's managed by Laravel. So this is always going to come back true regardless of whether there is something or isn't something and it'll just cause havoc and it's never going to output the message you're looking for because the message is not called flash. The message is called success. Okay, so don't get that confused. What we want to do here is called is success. Okay, and that's that's this right here is the name that you're looking for. All that flash means is only is to only keep it for one very one um, uh, request. That's all that flash means. Okay, but success is the name and it's stored in session. So when we come over here, we just want to see does success, does the session have success? Okay, if it does, it will return true, which means we'll go into our if statement. So in here, what we want to do is output our um, HTML. Now, since we're using Bootstrap, there's already alerts created for Bootstrap. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so um, as you can see here, if you come up to, I was already kind of there, I was taking a look at it before, but if you're on your getbootstrap.com, and I'll have a link for this in the description as always, guys, I'm looking out for you. Um, but um, you go to getbootstrap.com and over to components. And actually, I'll probably just link directly to alerts. But you go to components and then down over here on the side, we have alerts. And these are what the alerts look like. So this is a successful one, is this green one. And um, this is what we need to do. We just create a div and give it a class of alert and alert success. So it's pretty actually pretty easy. Let's go ahead and just copy this though, this top one for success and copy it over and paste it in here. And then let's just clean this up so we get rid of these dots and make a new line. And now for the body of our success message, we want to do, I'm gonna go ahead and make a strong tag and say success like this. And then, actually let's not do it, we don't need a space because we'll do a space over here. Let's just do a space and then we'll go ahead and do our double brackets for blade so we can output the name or the value of our session which will be the actual message. So we do session and then get, and this gets it out of the session and then the name of the item in the session. Because remember, we can have tons of different things in the stored in the session. Um, so this allows us to do um, success, and that'll pull the success message out of the session. Um, so that's all we need. Let's go ahead and save that, and let's go actually give it a try. Let's make sure this works. Now you might need to, depending, oh, there's actually something I just remembered that we need to do before we move forward. Um, we actually need to go to our routes because we're not taking advantage of sessions currently in our routes. Let me show you what I mean. If you go up to app and then down to HTTP and then routes. All right, you can see that there's this mystery little, uh, it says application routes right here. And you can see there's a group called middleware. We haven't talked about middleware yet, but middleware is basically what, um, it's basically code that runs after the, the routes, after something is sent to the route, but before it gets to the controller. So right here what we do is, um, someone makes a request to say the contact page and it goes immediately to the routes file, finds the contact page, and then goes immediately to the page controller. Middleware is something that sits in the middle. And what we can do is if we have middleware, it'll actually process all the code in the middleware before going into the controller. This is really good if you have things like authentication or something like that that needs to be set up for every single request and you don't want to replicate it in the controller. That's when middleware becomes really, really useful. Now there's a middleware that's called web and web includes things, it even tells you up here, it includes things defined in your HTTP kernel and includes session state, CSRF protection and more. So we need session state and so we actually have to make sure that our routes are inside of this, um, this web middleware and before we work with sessions. 
Now we want sessions to be in everything. So we're just gonna go ahead and take all the routes and put them into this middleware. So let's just do that. So let's just copy all of this, we'll cut, and then make sure you get rid of the comment here and paste. Okay, so now all of the sessions here will, will go through the middleware, the web middleware, and then have access to things like session. Okay, so now we should be ready to set up. So let's go back over to our, our blog, and then let's go to posts slash create, okay? In the next video maybe, we'll, we gotta we gotta actually add a button for this. Right now we don't have it um, in our navigation, but um, let's go to post slash create, like you're gonna create a blog post. We're gonna submit the blog post, which we did in the last video. It should be successful, and if it's successful, we should get redirected to the show page, but this time we should get, last time we got a blank screen, this time we should get a success message. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's say um, testing our notifications. And then for the body, we'll just say this is a test of the notifications service we just started. Like that, we'll go ahead and click create post. Okay, great, we got, it was all successful and you can see that we got a message right here, okay? So it says success, the blog post was successfully saved and that's the message that we passed in to our, um, uh, into our session and then we pulled it out of the session and put it into the view, all right? Now, if we refresh this page, what's gonna happen is um, it's gonna be a new request. So that session variable, since it was flash, is gonna be deleted and we should not get the message anymore. It should only show the blog post. So let's try it, let's just refresh. And sure enough, we refreshed, we get the blog post. It's not the real blog post, but it's our dummy one. And then um, we're still on post slash 12, which is good. You'll probably be on post three. I do a lot of work in between the videos, and so I end up creating a lot of posts. So I have, I'm up to 12 now, but you'll be on probably number three. And then um, we don't have the message anymore. So this is really good. The page loads, even if there's nothing in our ses session variable, and that's awesome. That's really, really good, um, just like that. Well, now you might be wondering, what if there are error messages, all right? Well, how do we handle error messages? Let me show you. Okay, so now we know how to get, we've got our success message set up, but we don't have our errors message set up. And I mentioned how in our post controller, this validate will automatically submit errors back to our um, to the same request. So if this fails here or here, what happens is it goes back to the, the previous page, which is create, and it will automatically add um, a message called errors to the flash uh, session, okay? So it'll automatically flash it to the session, which is exactly what we did with success, but now I want you to show you how to work with the um, automatic errors that might be generated from Laravel. Now, when this happens and there's errors created, Laravel will automatically flash to the session something called errors, okay? And that will include um, an object with multiple errors inside. So what we wanna do is if we go back over to our messages, let's go ahead and get that set up in here. What we can do is we can check to see if there are any um, if there are any errors to show. Now we're going to do it a little bit differently this time. Instead of doing to see if session has errors, there's always going it's always going to come back true because Laravel actually sets that even if there are no errors, it automatically sets it when we go through our web middleware that we set up just earlier. And so it's always going to come back true in this case, um, which is different than when we handle it ourselves because this only comes back true when we actually set it, otherwise it'll come back false. So what we're gonna do is, it, there's always gonna be something called errors, but usually it'll be set to, there will only be, there will be zero items in the object. Um, but if there's errors to display, there'll be one, two, three, however many errors there are. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see if count um, of the errors object is greater than zero, okay? So if there's more than zero objects in there, if there's any objects, then we would enter this if statement. Okay, so let's go ahead, we'll just end the um, end if. And then the middle here, what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and create our, um, the div just like we did here. So let's just, we can just, uh, we'll just make it real fast. So it's gonna be um, div with a class of alert and then alert danger, which gives makes it the red color um, in with bootstrap. All right, and then just to, just for screen reading, you do this uh, roll alert. It actually doesn't affect anything other than for screen readers. Um, close the div, and then the middle, I just wanna say um, strong, and we'll just do errors like this. 
And then under here, what we're gonna do is loop through all of the errors that we might have, because we don't know if there's one, two, three, however many there are. So what we're gonna do is create a loop. Now we can create loops in um, Blade the same way we do if statements with just the at sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a loop. We're gonna do a for each, and then um, we're gonna do for each errors as error. Like that, okay? So we're gonna pull out each item in the errors um, object and call it error. And then let's just go ahead and end for each here. And that's how you would create a for each loop. And then in the middle here, all we need to do is output the um, the actual error message. So what, what we're gonna do here, let's do error. That'll actually output the message. And then let's just go ahead and wrap this in uh, list item tags. So list item, close list item. We probably should here then um, call it a, an, an unordered list, and then at the end of the um, 4 H, we'll close the unordered list. Let's just clean this up a little bit like that. Okay, so we're gonna create an unordered list and then display every error in there. So that should create our errors. I hope that wasn't too fast for you guys. We just created the div here. Um, this is just to show the text for errors. We create an unordered list, then we looped through every error in this errors object, called it error, submitted it there, and wrapped it in li tags so that it'll just be a bulleted list of all the errors. All right, and this will only show if there's more than zero errors. Let's go ahead and save that and come back over to our web page and test it. So if we come over here, let's go ahead and just try to submit it without anything filled. Well, let's just refresh it, make sure that um, we've taken everything into effect, and then we'll um, submit it without any errors or without any um, anything filled in. Okay, well we have one problem here. Our JavaScript form validation that we set up in the previous video is gonna catch all of these errors. I can't actually submit it because of the um, JavaScript validation. So we could turn off our JavaScript, but what we'll just do here is remove the JavaScript form validation really fast, and then um, we'll add it back in when we're done testing. So let's just come back over to our create. And then in our form, we'll just get rid of this data partially validate so that it doesn't try to validate. And then let's also get rid of the required and max length. And let's get rid of this required. Like that. Okay, make sure you keep the parentheses in good order. This way, we're not gonna get the JavaScript validation. Let's refresh. Okay, now when we submit it, we shouldn't get JavaScript validation. Perfect. Now this time, what it did is it actually submitted our errors. It looks like we have an error with how, we have a problem with how it, we output the errors. Let me go ahead and take a look at the code and see what the bug might be. Um, okay, here's our errors. Okay, so I think, so what happened here is errors, we actually need to call an op, um, a method on this, it says all. Okay, so we need to make sure we're actually pulling out all of the errors and then call each one as error. That minor thing is what we need to fix. Let's go ahead and save that and refresh this. So we refreshed it because it's flashed, the message goes away, let's submit it again. Okay, and now you can see that we actually got the errors. So the title field is required and the body field is required. Now let's go ahead and let's just type in a whole bunch of characters here. And I wanna get over 255 characters and see if that one works. So 255 characters is a ton, guys, like a ton. Okay, so that should be over 255 though. Yeah, that should be over 255. Let's go ahead and create post. There we go, it says the title may not be greater than 255 characters and the body field is required. So here we are, we've got our error messages and um, now we're ready to continue on because now we're gonna be able to submit those errors um, as, or those success and error messages as we move throughout our application. All right, now the last thing we need to do before we move on into the um, next video is just undo some of the JavaScript. The, remember when we got rid of the JavaScript form validation? Let's just go back and undo that to bring it back to our application because um, uh, we're gonna need that going forward. So if we go back over to the create.blade.php, you should just be able to do control Z or Apple Z and just undo everything we did here, save that. And now we should have our JavaScript form validation back, okay, which is what we need. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. We're gonna work on getting, um, we're now gonna pull items from the database and show them on our show page and also in our index page, all right?